They've had to haul the cement, they've had to haul the pipes, they've had to do all the digging. This has taken a lot of work, and the community is the one that's done it. Nobody from the outside has come in and done, done this work. Larry, thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you. Glad you could be here in person. How did you discover that some of these treatments were so um, simple and inexpensive? How did you figure that out? Well, it's interesting. When I took this course in tropical medicine, <clears throat> I wasn't a bit interested in tropical medicine. I did it just to kind of be in England because I'd gone to school there as an undergrad and <laughs> ended up being the most interesting thing I've ever done in my life. And uh, I remember one day, it was a long day, and it, this is a very intense course, it was about six months, and I was sitting at the top of an amphitheater, and there were five men at the bottom. The fifth one, he looked so boring. And I remember distinctly thinking, when he gets up to talk, it'll be easy for me to just slip out the back door. But when he got up to talk, the whole room was just like it went electric. His name is Professor David Mort. I found out later he'd been nominated for a Nobel Prize. Oh, wow. But he had spent most of his professional life in, in uh, West Africa just trying to find simple solutions to problems. We tend to think so high tech, but he just really dummied down. He's the one that came up with oral rehydration. He's the one that came up with the growth charts for children that we all take for granted. Wow. Many, many simple things, and I actually read his obituary not long ago. He was responsible for saving the lives, he said, of hundreds of thousands of children. Wow. Very simple things. Yeah. Simple things like like what, like shoes or like? Uh, shoes, clean water, yeah. uh, and simple yeah. things like that. Yeah. And we decided that we were going to only involve ourselves in projects that we call SPUD. We just made this up. This isn't in textbooks. But nothing to do with potatoes. <laughs> no, or, no. Yeah. Yeah, simple, practical, understandable, and doable that had what we call a high LPI index. That means lives positively impacted. Simply stated, we want to take a little bit of money and we wouldn't help a lot of people. Yeah. And so where did that lead you? Well, we work with women's projects, we work with water projects, we work with the, the third W, is it's, uh, we call it walking, but it's actually a foot disease that we work with. Then we send out dental teams, and our most recent thing that we've started doing is we've started doing cataract surgery. Cataract surgery, is that a big issue, big problem? It's a huge issue. Ethiopia has one of the highest numbers of blind people per capita of any country in the world. About 1.6% of the population is blind, wow. which is absolutely massive. And about 80% of that's treatable or preventable. Of that 80%, wow. over half is due to cataracts. 15-minute operation, and you can restore vision to a person who otherwise is just stumbling in the dark. Holy smokes. Yeah. Wow. That's a huge, huge change. And these people when they can't see, are uh, burdens not only to themselves, but to their families, I imagine, too. Well, the issue is not even so much the fact that the person's blind. The real issue and the real tragedy is that in this country, we have seeing-eye dogs, but there they have seeing-eye children. So typically what will happen is they'll sort of indenture a child, often it's a girl, and they have to lead this person around. They're just basically uh, indentured to that person as long as they're alive. No school. No, no school, no yeah. play, no nothing. Yeah. Wow. Wow, so you're really, you're, you're, you're saving two lives when you do that. You're saving two surgery. lives. That's exactly right. Oh, amazing. So women, water, walking, teeth, and blindness. That's right, yeah, yeah. you got it. Um, so not spending a lot of money and you're changing a lot of lives. That's right. Yeah. We can do a cataract surgery for anywhere between about 35 to $50. And to put that into perspective, I was talking to a friend of mine recently who's a dermatologist. And I was telling him what we were doing, and he said, I just had cataract surgery done on my dog. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. I said, how much did that cost? It's $9,000 for his dog. Now, this, this audience here, I think you said it's about 200 seating capacity. For that $9,000, we could provide cataract surgery for everybody in this room. And I'm not, I'm not against dogs. I love dogs. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I think there is a, you know, it's, you know, that's a whole other conversation, which is the cost of health care and what's going on and why things cost yeah. what they do. But, but $50 for somebody in Ethiopia is also out of reach of most people. It and, is. And yeah. Just an impossible thing, right? Well, 78% of the population lives on less than $2 a day. Oh, really? Given those kinds, of, uh, those kinds of opportunities, you must be spending a lot of time over there, <laughs> I guess. I'm spending more and more time, yeah. 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 And um, how do you pay for the medical services you provide? Well, we're an all-volunteer organization. We are a uh, uh, 501c3. Yeah. So, and all the monies that we raise go directly for the projects. Now, of course, we do have expenses, but we pay for those ourselves. So yeah. if a person gives a dollar, a dollar goes. 
Um, to the I, services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild. And so we raise money amongst our friends. We, we go out and we talk wherever anybody they'll listen to yeah. us. I guess we're and, listening at this point. Yeah. And fortunately, we've been able to keep up. I'm yeah, very thankful yeah. for that. Of course, it's wonderful to see. I mean, we had recently a lady in her early 30s that um, had four children, two of whom she had never seen in her life. And um, we did surgery on her, and she saw two children that she'd never seen in her life. It was just amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when did you start doing all this stuff? I did my course in tropical medicine in the late 80s, and then we formed our nonprofit in 2006. Any idea how many people you've helped since you started this organization? Well, I'm sure that for every cataract that we do, you know, it has a tremendous impact on the family because right. it liberates a child. It, it takes a tremendous economic burden off of the family. So I would say at least five people for every cataract that we do. So that'd be about 30,000 people. 30,000 people. And, and then wow. our other projects, I'm sure we've just probably impacted maybe 75,000. Wow. Wow. That's great. Thank you. If people want to see pictures and, and learn more about the work you're doing, is there a website or something they can go we to? Do. We do. Our website is uh, www.thaf.org. THAF.org. Okay, that's great. Yeah. We have a lot of pictures there. I, I would love to see some. Well, Larry, it's a great story, and I really appreciate you stopping by to share it with us. Meanwhile, congratulations, because what an amazing thing has been sort of you know, created by this uh, endeavor that you started. That's right. Congratulations at this, this week's winner of the Achievement Award, Mr. Larry Thomas, founder of Tropical Healthcare Alliance Fund, helping so many people in Ethiopia and elsewhere.